Thank you for being here, Ryan. Thank you for having me. One of the new things in Jump 17 is called... Easy DOE? Easy DOE. Why did we think we needed an, another button in the DOE menu? Well, so I'll say in part, I've heard from users who they've heard about DOE or they've taken a short course on design and experiments and they want to go off and do their first experiment. Right. Right. And so they go look under the DOE menu and really we try to get people to use custom design. Mm. That's our multi-purpose tool. I love custom design. That's, as do yeah. I. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I use it every day. Yeah. Right. Um, but when it's your first experiment, right. you go there and you can't remember exactly what you've been told about it. It can mm. be a bit overwhelming with all the options. So with that, we thought, well, why don't we try to put on some kind of training wheels? Let's help lead you through your first experiments. Right. And that's really where Easy DOE came into play. I might want to use Easy DOE because it contains the entire DOE workflow. Right. So when I use custom design, I create my design, make a data table. Now I have to go into fit model and do everything else. But if I want to teach somebody DOE, if I want to explain somebody to somebody what a DOE is, it's nice to have that entire workflow encapsulated. Right. Yeah. And so in that way, I can share an easy DOE, so a jump DOE file, and walk them through each of the different steps all within one place. Let's, so if I were to find it, I'll go to DOE, and it's right there. That's right. Easy DOE. Okay, so this is what the beginning looks like. And there's like some really nice hints about like what you're actually trying to do. All right. So let's say that we have add factor that is a can take any numerical value. So that would be like a classical temperature. That's right. Anything you can measure, right? And then we have well, how would you describe a discrete numeric? Okay. So this is where it's still in that same continuous spectrum. Yeah. We have this numeric value, but I only have fixed values. So let's say if we wanted to bake a pizza, yeah. right? But maybe our pizza sheets, all we have is 12 inches, 14 inches, or 16 inches. I right. can't create a pizza pan that's 14.5 inches, right? I only have those three set sizes. Right. So even though that is a continual measurement, it's not a, it's not a scalable. Like, <laughs> that's right. That's what you got. I would say actually quite normal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's three yeah. numeric. Yeah. I, had a, I had something I really want to test at four levels. I could add like that. All right, the next one here is then the categorical. So this it's, we just have some kind of labeling on it. Yeah. Right, and so that's why even here, if we take a look, so here it's talking about the specified number of categories, but if we take a look at a hint, you know, it might be copper, aluminum, or magnesium for metals. Yeah. It might be supplier A or B. We can try to find other attributes about them, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's do we buy from supplier A or supplier B, or material yeah. A or B. Yeah, so even though we could find some continuous values to explain that, we can make them change. It is what it is. That's right. So, okay, that's a good. Idea. So let's add one of those. So now we have one of three. Let's add just another here. So we have four factors. Then we could go ahead and navigate. So that's the defining phase. That's right. Defining phase done. And we have four X's, like pretty much just one of each. Yeah. And, and we could define a response, but if we look, it's already it's already oh, right. figured out that we're going to be measuring something here. So we can yeah. even just keep, you know. So it, it does give you some hints, though. It tells you what kind of goals you might have. Yeah. One thing I sometimes say is that while the person who's making the DOE is really interested in the response, the statistician is not so much because I really, really don't get, doesn't make any changes to the DOE. That's right. Um, so while, yes, they're really important. <laughs> like, but for this sense, um, of course, you would specify, you need to understand like, what you want them to be measuring. Yeah. Um, but let's so hit, hit continue. But we could, let's say we're looking at a yield we want to maximize. Right. Um, these are our four factors. So you could get like you want to get just a main effect, uh, main effect in two interactions, or a response surface. Let's go all the way and do a response surface. And again, there's hints on all of them, uh, what like what these does. Um, but going for the bottom one, then you're pretty safe, right? That's right. Yeah. So then yeah, it's, it's usually you're getting a lot more information the farther down you go, and so but okay. as you change those models, in general, you're going to need more runs. So yeah. this is where you have to start balancing, what's my budget? How yeah. many runs can I afford to do? And in here, even if you look at what we're suggesting for main effects, yeah. it was the same number of runs for the two-factor interactions and only a few more for the response surface. And so yeah. this is if, you know, if we really... Yeah, that's not a big jump, but that's a big jump in terms of what we're getting. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I think, if, but again, if you were, if you had absolutely no knowledge about a scientific experiment, this is the first time you've ever seen it. That's a safe choice. That's right. That's like a safer choice. Yeah. And if your option is one factor at a time in Excel, 
even though you, yes, you might be doing this at like 16 runs, the kind of knowledge you get out in the end of the day would be vastly that's more. Right. All right. So yeah, that's a, that's a good, good design. Then it can't be true to the design. We should put in like, uh, like music. Okay, so that's just showing me what kind of levels I'm getting. Um, and three levels for X1. Um, so I'm, that this is my continued factors. Um, it's because it's a response service, kind of little jargon here. I'm gonna be looking for curvatures because if I only have two points, it's really difficult to do anything else than draw a straight line. <laughs> but you need that third middle point to do a, a curve. Yeah, um, that's right. And because we, for some reason, really wanted to have four levels, we are allowed to have four levels in, in the X2. And maybe it's because it's fixed to that. Like it's that, that is the pizza sizes you have. Um, and the X3 was like the kind of labeling. Maybe it's, uh, what could that be? Yeah, we must call that supplier or product yeah, supplier. Um, and X4, which is yet another continuous. Okay, so I'm happy. That looks good. Yeah. I hit next. Yeah. Uh, then start. So here, this would be yield, short for Y. Right. <laughs> I totally intentionally called that Y. <laughs> um, so we're modeling yield, and we would type in one at a time. So in the first run, that would be like the low setting of X1. The um, If you do like that, like that. Low setting, low setting, L2, and a medium setting. And you would then type in what was the yield of that experiment. Right. Now we don't yeah. really... We don't really want to do that right now. No, and we don't, we don't have anything, but we could simulate some responses. That's right. I think that's a good point. How do we... Uh, how so do we there's a show simulation panel. We look just underneath uh, in those X's there. So just right in here, there's right. a show simulation panel. Yeah, and we're going to put... X2 is really important. Uh, right, X1 is really important. X2 is really negative. Um, there is a X2 also has. They're really, really strong. I think that's fine. Let's do, let's simulate that. So when I hit simulate, look at that. Yeah. I got some data. Yeah. Don't do that. That's not how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> but like for these kind of purposes, it's nice. Okay. And you actually get, you get like a feel for how that could look. Um, down here, then that would auto update while you were putting data That's into right. we got all at once but you would never do <laughs> get that <laughs> all right it would be nice if that's how to sound experiment it was like boom here it is that's, yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> this one i actually really like um but i think we do need to put a few words on it yeah um so what is the intention of, or what are we looking at here well so now this is where that model, that response surface model that we specified back on the model tab. So the response surface said we're going to do main effects, two-factor interactions, which are like there we see the X1 times X2. Yeah. And as well as quadratic effects. So that's where you see that X1. So that's that quadratic where it's going to be dipping in the middle one way or another. That one? Yeah, an X1 squared. And actually, if you remember, yeah. the X2 squared we chose to be large here. Oh, yeah. So, 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 so that's why that one yeah. is further away from zero than that one. Okay. And so when we look at this, the idea is, well, those confidence intervals that are on there, so depending on how comfortable you are, but the idea is how far are these effects away from zero, right? Because zero means that they weren't really doing much in terms okay. of the yield. They weren't changing the yield that much. So is that, can I, can I see that as the amount of difference or is it standardized? Yeah, so it, it's standardized. This is where, because we didn't necessarily change the coding, right? right? And so if you think what jump is doing behind the scenes, when you put in the values that you're actually using, it's putting those on a minus one to one scale. And so that's okay, why sometimes yeah. you'll see in the brackets the way that it's doing that. Yeah. And so, because if this was actually temperature, maybe we were had 350 and 450. Right. The way Jump is treating that is to standardize that from a minus one to a plus one scale. Okay. And then we, the, because then everything is comparable. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That's actually, so every time something is away from zero, and that means that this confidence band is very much not include zero. Right. It's supposed to be significant. Yeah. And that's pretty much just what a p-value calculation is. Yeah. Is your confidence interval, does it include zero? No. <laughs> then you're significant. <laughs> okay. And then you have, I, this is a, I sometimes use this for outlier searching, like if, so this is the distance from a point to our regression line. 
And if that is beyond three sigmas, that's a really weird experiment. Then, then you may want to look and see, yeah. did somebody did somebody mess something up or something yeah. going on? Right. So that's, that, if it's beyond the red, it really falls outside what we thought it should be um, and worth looking into. And when I said residual distance from that, I, I can even click it. You see that point lies some further away than, for example, that point, which we see is almost right on the line. Um, nice and interactive as we know jump. That's right. And so if we navigate to the last one. What I like about this is like in jump, the jump likes to make pop-up windows. Yeah. Putting it mildly. But I'm like, I'm staying here. I'm just like even entering the data here, making everything in one spot. Yeah. So if you're someone who's never seen jump before, they don't have to take into account all kinds of different things. They just have that one, this is yeah. your thing. Yeah. Don't don't leave it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I feel free to leave it. But, <laughs> um, and so what are we looking at here? Is the, so the, so the Y stands for yield. Right. Yeah, very intentionally called it yield. Um, and we can see that, how do, you, how do you interpret this? Well, so the way I look at this is, let's see what happens if, if we were to change X1. What's yeah. gonna happen to the- Do you wanna drive? All right. So let's see what would happen if we were to Change X1. So here I can just I can click on these red lines and see what happens. And so here, well, we didn't actually have a have an interaction per se, but we see. So it's just it's going along that line. Yeah. So more is better. That's right. So more is better here. If this was uh, like a temperature, you want to get that up to one. Yeah. And so likewise for this for this X2 variable. Well, let's see. We can yeah. already see this drop. Just how much that's yeah. going to drop. We change from X2 from one to two. So if this was our four buffer solutions uh, or the four different p-values we could operate at, yeah. um, we can see that three seems to be the best choice. Or what, how would you interpret that? Well, if we want to maximize yield, I mean... Oh, right, then, yeah. Then one would be... But so that's a great question though. But let's say, you can see, I can start playing around with this a lot. Yeah. Right. But what if I actually want to find what's the best? Yeah. Right. Well, you see we have this optimize button right here. Oh, I didn't see that. So, but if we click on that. So see now find the, the best combination. Right. Yeah, and if I had like ten X's, with multiple interactions, right? It would might take me some time to drag and drop. That's right. To figure out exactly where yeah. you want to. And see now, jump has told us we hit that optimize button, and this would tell us. And now this is where you have to decide: Do these settings make sense from, from yeah. an economic standpoint? But in terms of the yield, this that is would what it's be telling your you. Best. The predicted yeah. best. Yeah. But you could have another yield, wouldn't it be the, like, let's say, uh, yeah. the cost, and you could That's right. use both, both Ys, and you could optimize on the fast, uh, both. Correct. I think that I would be comfortable giving someone that. I think if you, if you do what I do here, you would do vastly better than one factor at a time in, in Excel. Yeah. <laughs> and even in many, or many things else, like, you would do vastly better, right? Well, and now the nice thing, so with Easy DOE, because you mentioned sharing that, if you look under file so we can actually save this so you see this ah, easy doe file it even has a file it even has a file type and in so, some places if you have your own file name <laughs> yeah so so you can say once you save this easy doe yeah. file as they have access DOE, to the entire thing you can see right. what i'm doing and it would it would bring them back exactly where you are here i'm noticing we have a last tab there i thought we were done here well yeah let's see what's on that last tab so it's right. like kind of the Summary? That's right, yeah. Like, or we could call it report. Yeah, well, we, so we, we label it as report, but yeah, I like yeah. to think of it as that summary. Yeah. That, that especially if you're going to explain to somebody, well, this is what was done in the experiment. You know, we've kind of tried to summarize, these are the things somebody might ask you about as to what choices that you yeah. made. And so now we have- So if you have like a, imagining a, a folder in a shared space, and instead of people just sharing their, a data table, like you go in there, there's a script, everything you need. If they say that, you have the entire thing. Right. You have all the thoughts that was put into this um, and the conclusions that were drawn from it. Um, any final comments? Uh, just give it a try. Um, yeah. And hopefully we'll put a link there for wherever a seven year old can use this new easy DOE. Yeah, I saw so that. <laughs> yeah, I saw yes. you made that. Yeah, there'll be a link. I'll, I'll make sure to make a link. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have jump, you can actually go to jump.com slash stats like yes and get a 30-day free trial. 
I got my own <laughs> hyperlink. Yeah. And in, in 30 days, you should be able to run your own you first experiment th- using... I should be made doable. Yes. All right. No, well, thanks again and pleasure having you. Yes, thank you.